everyone. Welcome back to TC 911 Beyond the Call, the Tarrant 911 District Podcast. I'm your host, Abby Dudek, the Communications Coordinator here at Tarrant 911 District. And this is Episode 5. And today I have the great pleasure of speaking with Elaine from MedStar Communications. How are you doing today, Elaine? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing really great. Thank you so much for volunteering to come on my podcast. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 not as bad. We'll go through it. It'll be good. It'll be good. We'll have a, we'll have a good time. So you're at MedStar, and uh, just to remind folks at home that uh, MedStar has its own communication center. So if you live in Fort Worth, what is it like Fort Worth, Benbrook, Haltom City? Yeah, uh, fifteen different areas. Yeah, or I guess fourteen now. And if you live in an area that, that sure, uh, yeah, Sunrise pretty much Fort Worth and a little uh, kind of connecting to Fort Worth. Right. And if you call nine one and need medics, the nine one one dis the the first nine one dispatchers that actually take the first initial call is usually the police dispatchers, mm-hmm. and they'll transfer you to MedStar if you have a medical problem. Right. So, and we call at the district here. We call that a secondary PSAP. And if you've listened to other episodes, you'll know that PSAP stands for Public Safety Answering Point. Yes. This is fun. I should do a test. I don't know who's going to take this test. <laughs> Probably no one, but uh, maybe I'll put it out there. I have a nice prize or something right. like that. They can have a blanket or a coffee mug. I just, I, you know, we just got new coffee mugs last month. So I, I'm excited about those. Uh, all right. So you've been at MedStar. How long you been MedStar for? Uh, going on, I believe three years. Uh-huh. Did you dispatch anywhere prior? No. No? This, that's it? You just kicked it off and went right into the medical yeah, side of dispatch? So- Initially, I took um, the EMT course at TCC, Mm -hmm. and I finished that. I just didn't take my test. Okay. Um, And then I was like, well, I'm going to go get hired on at MedStar. That way I'm already with the company, and I can do some moving within the company. And... I didn't want to switch over until I had finished all my training and everything. And I wanted to be pretty proficient in my job before I try to do it, take on anything else. Um, But I've kind of uh, just been there. I I mean, you fell in love. Did you fall in love with the communication side of things? Yes. And you're just like, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, if I ever did go in the field, I would like I would do that. My my main job would be communications, and mm-hmm. then I would pick up in the field. Oh, okay. That'd be, that'd be all right. Yeah. Okay, so all you have to do is take a test. Kind of. Take a test. So I would be certified with the – take take the national test, and then, of course, be hired on by MedStar for – EMT and then take all of their courses, which is another, another, another scheduling <laughs> nightmare, a possible another st- scheduling conflict that you'll, yeah. you'll have. Okay. So you'll take, you'll do all that. And that will, pro- how long does that process take to, if you get on, well, if you got to take the test, so you just have to go do that. Do you have to go do that at TCC? No, I, I don't actually remember where I have to take it. Um, I, I do know that I think it's past the time for me to take it, so oh. I don't know what. Do you have to go take? Do you have to go do the class again? I think so. Uh, would that be a nice refresher? Yeah, and then it, <laughs> everybody would be like, "How do you know all this?" I'm like, "Yeah, you don't know. I'm just, I just know it." You'll be the brainiac of the <laughs> class. They'll be like, "Oh my gosh, she is genius!" And then you can't tell anybody. Yeah. Or hopefully they'll never hear this podcast yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody tell anybody that Elaine's gonna go take her class again. <laughs> so okay, that's that's just some that's some good goals there and everything. Yeah. That's awesome. But uh, I've encountered in this in this season as I've talked to dispatchers who were wanting to go be like nurses or we had another EMT or you know another line of work within public safety. They end up falling in love with the communication yeah. side because it's it's everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, it's not the hands on stuff. Totally get that, but you really take on everything else and it really puts you on the spot without being physically on the spot yeah kind of thing so is that would you agree that happened like you just kind of fell in love with it and yeah I, I I fell in love with it I I don't see myself doing anything outside of EMS mm-hmm. a long-term goal would 
be to be a medic eventually. Okay. But that would all be part time. Yeah, because Why? Cause you com- want to do communications yeah. first. That's awesome. See, mm-hmm. telling you folks, I say, and everyone, everybody just, they just, they fall in love with the communication <laughs> side of the public safety. And that's great. And I like how you said your long-term goal, because one of my questions is, where where do you see yourself in the mm-hmm. next five years? So you're looking at doing part, being a part-time uh, EMT and then doing it still full-time. Would you want to grow within the communications division? Um, yes, I have already grown a little bit because I went from being, so we have, you get hired on and your your title is system status controller at MedStar, um, but you're not a full system status controller until you're completely checked off of all your training and then you do your call taking training, which is like, we cut it down to 14 shifts, but you, um, it's it's like a long process. It's a total of about nine or ten months. Okay. Um, and then after that, you're uh, checked off, and you're a system status controller. And then the opportunity came up where there was a CTO position, so I applied for it, and now I'm one of the trainers. All right. So you train all the newbies that come in. That's awesome. Yeah. That's how do you like that? Is it just kind of what you expected it to be, or did you know? Is it um, I don't know. I've always kind of been someone who would always help people when, in regards to like training or learning or anything like that. Um, so like at my previous, one of my previous jobs, um, I, I worked for Starbucks mm, for, oh yeah. for 10 years and I started off as a barista, then I became like a trainer and then a, a supervisor and then eventually a store manager. Okay, awesome. That's I'm, uh, There's a couple of episodes that we talked about how much I just envy the Starbucks <laughs> staff because they're just amazing. I don't drink coffee, mm-hmm. um, but I'll go there. I'll go there with other people and things and right. just see them. It's just like a symphony and they don't even miss a beat. Yeah. And I'm just like, those, the multitasking alone, I'm like, yeah. oh, you should apply to be a 911 dispatcher. <laughs> I mean, no no knock to Starbucks, but I right. would probably imagine the benefits are probably better as a first responder than yeah. at Starbucks. But no, it's okay. It's all right. You know, it's it's okay if you want to work at Starbucks. I'm just saying, just saying, if you have all those fantastic multitasking skills, we would love to have them in the mm-hmm. 911 community. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I've actually talked to a few people who are now dispatchers that have worked at Starbucks. Okay, see, I love it. You're recruiting them. I don't yeah. know if the Starbucks company appreciates <laughs> that, but hey, we do, mm-hmm. so that's okay. Did you get them to go to MedStar or did they go to no, other places? No. I just would talk to them after they were already hired and be like, oh, what did you do before this? Oh, okay, so, gotcha. All yeah. right, well, that's awesome. Okay, so it sounds you got a long-term goal of doing the EMT. I, think, I just think that's fantastic. And uh, I do have to say too that, I mean, I my own experience with MedStar, personally, I just, I love everybody there is so nice and the ambulance drivers communication of course I, I of course i got big hearts for the communication <laughs> center they got big hearts for all the communication center but i uh, you know when it's when it's your dealing person you know it's your call personal for health reasons it's like oh and then of course i don't want to give my name because i'm like they're gonna know who i am yeah so. <laughs> But everyone was great. So, and I, uh, I actually got to, uh, I saw the one of the ambulance, cr- one of the gals on the ambulance crew that was responding to mine at another event oh. at the Senior Synergy Expo because mm-hmm. I go to that every year, and she was there, and I got to see her again. She's like, "Oh my gosh, I totally remember that <laughs> and everything." Because I keep my business when I ride my bike, I keep my business card uh-huh. in my pouch because I keep a few of them because I'll. I love my job right, and I'll find and I'll start into. I'll start talking about <laughs> 91 education and offer free 91 education materials and I just I'm always talking about my job. I mean, heck, I go to the grocery store or something like that. Someone will see my shirt and they're like, "Are you a dispatcher?" I'm like, "No, I'm I'm the educator. I'm the 91 cheerleader." And then I go into the I mean, it's yeah. So, that's just that. But you know, that's uh Metzler has some fabulous uh women and men that work there. So, thank you for what you do and on the medical side of things too. So, cuz that's all you guys it's just medical calls after medical calls. And, yeah. Oh, was there a moment that you didn't think you would stay? Or like when you applied, did you think that you were just going to do it for a little bit and move on to the EMT thing? Or like maybe you were like, uh, maybe I'll just try this out. Did you think you'd be there three years? 
and coming longer. <laughs> I knew I would be there longer. I didn't know how long I would be in communications. Right, because of the EMT things. Yeah, because my heart was set on being in the field. Yeah. Getting dirty in the field and helping people out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I just was like, hey... I like, kind of like it in this little room right this here. This is not bad. Yeah. Not a bad gig. Now, is when you applied, you had al- have you always wanted to be an EMT from when you were younger? So when I was younger, I initially wanted to be a doctor. Okay. I wanted to, but I wanted to be an e uh, an ER doctor. All right. And then, wow, that's you. You yeah, you do like intensity. You're like, I don't want to be just any doctor. I want the craziness of yeah. the ER. Yeah, because. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. And that's for sure. Just like, just prepare for the unexpected and you're kind of like, like you're kind of like, when I, I want it to rain, but I want it to be a hurricane, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I live for things like that. I'm just well, like, <laughs> you are definitely in the right line of work. Kudos to you on selecting this, pro, this profession. So you, you wanted to do the, the, you know, you wanted to be an ER doctor. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, um, I got pregnant with my daughter and then I was like, oof, that's going to be like nearly impossible. Like I don't, let's see what else I can do. And then that's when I, I got hired at Starbucks and I did that. I was there forever. And then, um, after Starbucks, I worked uh, actually uh, at this AC company down the road, and I did admin for them. And then a couple years later, I started working for both, mm-hmm. um, MedStar and um, the AC company. And then I finally quit the AC company and just stayed with MedStar. So, so you wanted to know, so going back to the question, like you want, you want to be a doctor. Yeah. So then like, what got you to apply for MedStar? Okay, yeah. So I mentioned to my daughter, cause she was doing some type of school project or something. And, um, I told her that when I was younger, I wanted to be a doctor and she's like, well, why didn't you do that? And I was like, well, it was going to be really hard. Um, just having a kid and trying to go to school and so many years of school Mm -hmm. so she's like well you should see what else you could do and she's like well why don't you be like a nurse or something and I was like well I kind of want to be like the first ones which nurses they are the first ones Mm -hmm. at the hospital oh sure um but I was like but who really is the first person to put hands on a patient Mm -hmm. and that was EMTs and paramedics and so then she was like you should do something about that so I looked at it looked it up and I was like this is literally only like a course you're like I got to this this is eight years of school yeah (laughs) so then I was like okay because already I was with uh I had already finished my associates at TCC so I only needed my EMT class Mm -hmm. and um, I did that and then I got hired on at MedStar and here I am fantastic and your daughter by the way sounds like a fabulous young woman yes you know just really yeah (laughs) that's really impressive like mom what what else can you do you're good at something you're what what can you put out there it just sounds like she's a really really good one Uh, that's great to motivate (laughs) you like that she she's never going to give up on you it sounds like (laughs) that so that's good uh what would be a call a call that you took that you knew you had definitely made the right decision that this was your calling this was your this is it this is like your career tattoo like you got this do you have do you remember do you have one in particular that just stood out and you're just like okay yep this is where i belong definitely if you ever had to question it this was the call that stamped it i don't have a particular call but if i had to say it would probably be my very first call training cuz i'm like okay, this is what we're doing. This is how we do it. This is, we're just helping people or we're, if, if they don't need our help, we're sending them to the people that they do need to talk to. Is, you know, you said with training, do you mean like when someone called, you were training someone and you took a call or when you were in training? When I was in training. You, okay. Yeah. 
stuff. All right. So nothing in particular, just the whole thing of just sending people help and, and hearing that relief of, you know, reassurance for them that there, there's someone out there that can give them the help they need. Oh, that's good. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Do you have any educational messages for the public out there? Anything that you've noticed when people call that, you know, like a lot of the dispatchers, it's all well the the uh, the nine one the one one police dispatchers. It's very much know your location, know your location, you right. know. Uh, but when they come to you guys, it's they have a pretty good idea of where. Even if it's like we're trying to get the information mm-hmm. or whatever, but you all work together as a fabulous team to get that. But right. do you have any other advice, maybe on the the medical dispatch side of things that you would like to share with the public? They're all ears. Probably. The shorter your answer is, the better. Because sometimes you'll ask, um, like, tell me exactly what happened. And they'll say, well, 15 years ago, I was in a car accident and my back's been hurting. Oh, okay. And, oh. It's almost like the conversation you'd have at the doctor, like when the doctor's like, hey, when did this start or yeah. something like that. But with you guys, because if they're, if they're, if they are in touch with y'all, then it's kind of, it sounds like it's probably going to be immediate. Like, yeah, so, you know, so then we'd be like, okay, so, but, but what happened today that you needed to pick up the phone and call 911? Right. What, what's the issue today that's, that's different from before? And it's, and folks, I just want to say too, it's, it's not because they don't care or anything like that. It's because they want to get you the help as quick as possible, get that ambulance dispatched and then get that information to the crew. So the crew can start mentally get prepared of what they're going to be going to, you know, right. what they're going to be handling and things like that. So don't take it as a negative thing. It's just, they want the, the most, the, the recent information, what's going on in that moment so that they can, they can help and treat you the way that they need to. Cause you guys provide them with pre-arrival instructions right. based on what the situation yes. may be. Yes. And your three years, have you delivered a baby yet? I have delivered two. <gasps> Ooh, did you get to meet them or anything like no. that? Uh, see, I wish they did that more often. <laughs> they don't. I don't know. You know, I want to hear one story where they name the baby after the dispatcher. <laughs> Come on, let's have it. You all deserve that. Right. You know, I mean, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. You know, I'd be like, hey, you know, I named my kid after the dispatcher, you know. Yeah. So that would be all right. Even if it was, you know, a boy versus girl, you know, I mean, you can take a boy's name and turn it into a girl is girly mm-hmm. name or a girl's name and put it to a boy's name or something. Yeah. Or just name him Taylor and then that can go either way. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. <laughs> but so you've delivered three babies. Two. Two. Or two babies. Yeah, two babies. Two babies. Sorry. Two babies. Uh, have you? I see. Have you done the? Have you had to do the Heimlich maneuver over the phone? No, I actually recently did my first EpiPen. Really? Yeah. Okay. How was that? It was. It's intense. Yeah. Did they? Were they like got stung by bees or ate peanuts or? Um. So they called in and said. Um, I think I'm having an allergic reaction. My throat is itching, and I we just got through eating Panda Express, and I'm allergic to peanuts. Oh yeah, don't they use like peanut I sauce so. and like everything Pe- there? Yeah, that and high sodium. Just saying. <laughs> Sorry, Panda Express. <laughs> so um, I was, you know, I just did my regular instructions and then they're like well we have an epi pin do we need to go ahead and, and and use it and i was like well let's just hold off for a second so i finished going my, going through all my instructions right and then once we got to it then we give the epi instructions okay does it when, when they do the epi pen does it go away quickly is it pretty immediate or does it take maybe about 10 minutes or something to so, get everything through i don't know how that thing works this person wasn't really they were kind of having symptoms they just felt weird okay but they weren't having like any trouble breathing um when we were getting off the phone they're like okay i'm starting to 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 feel like my throat is swelling a little bit oh okay but it wasn't anything that they were freaking out about they just okay. knew that this is not the way I usually feel after I eat. So, because isn't I, it common that the, the most thing it's like you don't your your throat will sw- sw- uh, 
swell shut mm-hmm. and then you can't breathe right and there's something like the lips too and there's something like your lips will start if you eat some, it just depends i guess on each person and how yeah. they have a reaction to it but that's i'm not allergic to anything so i don't know i don't think I, i'm allergic to monday mornings <laughs> i need to have an epi pen every monday morning <laughs> the epi pen takes the shape of my bed because i don't want to come even though i still come to work early, early. i'm an early riser I get here pretty early at mm-hmm. the office but yeah that's the only allergic reaction i have <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> then by noon, the allergy seems to go away. Yeah. And then I'm fine. Did you see the movie Hitch? Yes. With Will Smith. Yeah, where he gets he, all swollen. He eats that, and then he's drinking the Benadryl, like, yeah. juice. And then, like... <laughs> I haven't watched that movie in forever. If you haven't seen Hitch with Will Smith, there's a part where he's, <laughs> they go to like a cooking class or something for a, a date night yeah. or something, and he eats a piece of fish or or he's got a shellfish allergy, and he, yeah. didn't know, he didn't realize he did until he did that, and then he just gets all morphed and whatnot because he's eating the shellfish, so they go to the store and he drinks a kid's Benadryl yeah. with a straw in it, like it's a juice box. So anyway, good times, good movie. Good movie. What else did you have? You uh, done CPR over the phone? I would imagine oh, yeah. that that's probably happened pretty frequently. Yeah, I've done it more times than I can remember. And so at MedStar, we have this little tree mm-hmm. outside of our. Oh, I did the one that's in the hallway. Yeah, that's like right before you walk in. Yeah. I have seen the CPR tree. Yeah, so that's the CPR tree. So it's like a, each leaf is every time we get a ROSC, so return of. Um, what it stands for? Yeah. Like, is it probably, is it, am I saying it resuscitation or basically you, 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 you saved their life. Would that be right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds positive. So, but you only get that if you're doing CPR and then um, return a spontaneous circulation. Okay. Wow. All right. That just clicked back in. I would never be able to remember. I guess I'd remember that if I worked there, but... <laughs> Um, but uh, you only get your little, so it's it's a tree and you have little leaves on it and each leaf is an incident and then it has the dispatcher's name okay. and um, the of course the, the tree is covered in leaves um, and you get your leaf by giving instructions, the patient being transported, they and they end up walking out of the hospital. Oh, okay. Well, I like that there's a lot of leaves then because mm-hmm. that makes that makes my heart happy because I don't I mean I know that it happens and I think everyone at home knows it happens that sometimes unfortunately and then our tree yeah. also has squares they so have squares the squares which uh, is this where it gets sad no okay I'm like <laughs> it gets happy oh okay um, the squares are every time you've delivered a baby uh, why are they squares they should be little like I think they're wrapped up babies as, I, like out I of the stork mouth or that's something a, uh, the plan um uh, yeah, I think that's the plan. I think it'd be cool for the the tree to have different colored leaves for different stages of life. Oh, that yeah. way you can kind of look at it and see um okay, this was a person over this age. This was a person that was like, you know, an adolescent. This was a baby. That tree is going to have to be the size of the side of your building. <laughs> Because you guys take so many medical calls and you all do such but, a great job. Yeah, that way you can quickly, like, you can look at it and you can be like, okay, all the trees are uh, all the times we've saved somebody. Yeah. And then, um, or we've helped save somebody. And then um, the leaves could be like a quick, like, you glance at it. Okay, the majority of the people are, you know this age and then oh uh and and then it would be like regular leaves like leaves change colors like oh i get what you're saying i like uh, the different types of call and it wouldn't be a cpr tree no 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 so it's kind of a cpr baby tree yeah oh okay yeah that's okay i mean the squares they need to i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm going to email her and be like, hey, I'm a graphic designer. Can I help you and make a little baby bat? You know, you know, like when the you ever seen the store the thing store, and they, yeah, they I, have I the think, little they I have think the that's little the plan. Um, but I don't know who's in charge of doing that. Maybe like some baby acorns or something. I don't know. I'm just coming up with this now. <laughs> I'm making this my own project now. No, I don't know. <laughs> wow. OK, so you definitely CPR. I know it's probably like the number one, the number one thing. Yeah. So you definitely have taken a lot of different calls and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. And you know what the nice thing about this career is, is you're still going to have the new ones that come in that you're never, you never thought you're going to get like abdominal thrusts. Mm-hmm. I am now going to wait for you to have an abdominal <laughs> thrust call. 
<laughs> hopefully it won't be me. I do live in the city of Fort Worth, so hopefully it's not going to be me. Okay, that would be ironic. Yeah. I, I choked tonight because... You know, I have you work tonight and then, oh, and you work. Okay. I'm knocking on wood. Oh, please. No, 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 no. Let's, let's get that out of the universe there. Let's suck that back out. So, but you definitely have a lot of calls that you've taken and, and such. So I definitely want to thank you again for your service. That's, I mean, y'all do a job that, you know, I, I always hear a lot of the public saying, oh, I, I can never do that. Yeah. You know, even I, I don't think I could ever go back to it. I mean, it's been over seven years since I've done it and I'm like, hmm. I really just like being your cheerleader, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, at work, I am the the person who, first of all, I know everybody. So You uh, know everybody in Tarrant County, Fort Worth? It seems like it. Oh, okay. You're okay. All so right. I'll be like, you just took a call for a person I went to high school with. Oh, were you born and raised here? Yes. Okay. Or... Uh, one time, actually, I have, my brother called in one time. He works valet at the Omni, and somebody nice. was in the vehicle having a seizure. Oh, okay. But they, I was, I was, I was actually training somebody on radio, and I was like, "Oh, look, my brother works there." And then, so I typed in the phone number in my phone, and it was my brother's phone number. So I was like, "Ah." <gasps> Is he calling in or is somebody calling in for him using right. his phone? Is he the patient or is he the caller? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I I found out that it was him calling in for somebody and then like um, just, just different people like um, I've had a couple other family members or um, like whenever we have... Uh, the TAC med standoffs. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. So... Um, Basically, like whenever you have your your PD, um, your stage for PD. Oh, right, you can't get on scene yet. <clears throat> right. And so okay. And then it turns into a whole situation. They bring in SWAT oh, and everything. Yeah. I've had um, some of the people that were on the other end of that. Oh, you they knew were in the yeah. house. Oh, you knew them. Yeah. Oh, knew. wow. That's got to make it tougher, right? Because you know who they are. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't like that person. I didn't actually know them, but I went to school with their girlfriend or their wife or somebody. But you still know. Of, yeah. like, you still can put a picture in your yeah. head of who they are. So, so that's kind of, that's personal because you, you do know them. You know, yeah. you may not like be shaking hands and hanging out and, right. you know going to see movies together and stuff but you know who they are yeah and then so people at work are like it's been a week or two since you've seen somebody's name on there that you know and then like a couple days later i'll be like oh there's somebody else i know oh wow Wow. Okay. There you go. Did yeah. they, did, is there like a tally mark, like Elaine? No, I thought about <laughs> doing a board of each week of how many people. Yeah, uh, we were joking, and they said instead of um, how many days have we been accident free, we should be like how many days have we had? Have we not, have we not talked to someone that Elaine knows? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's 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 interesting. Okay, and that's just like friends and family. That's just from growing up around yeah. here. Oh wow! So pretty much, probably everyone knows that you work there. I would imagine the people um, that you associate yeah, with, or maybe I mean more so the people that I, I am in contact with, um, like now, well, mm -hmm. not necessarily people that I was, went to elementary or middle school with and stuff like that. Okay. Well, that's all right. That's good to know. There you go. You know everyone, so they're probably okay. Now, don't think just because you know Elaine that you're going to get some sort of you know special <laughs> service or treatment or anything like that. Yeah. But no, MedStar is really good about being on scene because y'all see them. Everyone sees them. They just they literally drive around and wait for calls to happen. You yeah. know, you'll see them sitting in the parking lot of the Seven Eleven or you know whatever. They just kind of hang out. <laughs> yeah, and then and it's just like a one-way street because it can't be like, oh, hey, I, I saw that you called the other day. I can't do that. I just have to be like... Oh, yeah. You can't say anything. Until, unless they say something to you, then that's... Yeah, but still, yeah, there's there's a lot too. So if, you know, when you when when you work in, not just in the medical dispatch side of stuff, but any of the 9-1 dispatch or, you know, communications role, you, you can't do that. You got to... 
you know, I'm glad you brought that up because those that are maybe interested in applying or working, you know, it's mom's the word. Like you yeah. can't say anything. You can't, I mean, you can talk about the calls you have, but you just right. got to be discreet and you leave out names, addresses, mm-hmm. phone numbers, things like that. And even also like, even when I talk about stuff on this podcast, like I'll keep it to where it's just the subject matter of the right. the call itself. I don't, you know, you know, sometimes I don't even like giving if it's he, her, him, whatever. Mm-hmm. I just kind of say, well, they did that. And this is how the situation was or something. But yeah. So when you, when you take on this job, uh, if, you know, if someone, if you do have someone that, you know, and they come say something to you, that's different. Right. But then you can't just be like, Hey, cause at the time they may not even realize that they talked yeah. to you. And so they may be embarrassed based based on what the call is or something or whatever, and they didn't want anybody to know. And then yeah, I actually actually I took a call for my my mother in law. She called, and she was like, "Is this Elaine?" And I was like, "Oh man, yeah, hi." <laughs> That's awkward. I've had that happen to me. And and when I worked in Illinois, I've had that happen to me. And someone is like, is this Abby? And I'm, it's it's just kind of, you're in your zone. Yeah. You know, you're in, I'm in, I'm in my zone, you know? And then when that happens, it like, it's almost like a, like the Kool-Aid man busting through the wall and yeah. you're just like, oh, okay. This just went a completely different direction because your demeanor may change mm-hmm. too, because you know the person and your emotional status could change yeah. too, because you know the person. Well, like, um, I know a couple of our call takers have had to do life-saving instructions on their family members. Oh my gosh. Um, so my mom, she's like, I could never do this. Like I, 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 I just, just too emotional to do anything you do. Oh my gosh. And, um, I'm like, well, when you're taking the calls, you're kind of in it. Like it's just, you're doing your job. You're, you're, you know, inputting everything, helping the best you can. And a couple of the call takers that have had to um, do instructions on their family members, because I always would think like, if it was something like that, I wouldn't be able to like function. But um, a lot of a lot of the times it's, you know, you're in the zone. Yes, you know who the person is, but you give your instructions. And then as soon as they hang up, they're like, I gotta go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I can't, I, I, I'm speechless on it. I can't imagine yeah. what that would be like if, you know, my my spouse or someone mm-hmm. called into, I mean, I'm not 911 dispatcher anymore, but I mean, if I would have, you know, taken that and been like, I'm having, I think I'm having a heart attack or, yeah. you know, whatever. And then they become, I, oh, yeah. Oh, well, I hope that, I hope that no one has to, I would hope I can wear, I wish I could wave a magic wand and hope that no one has had to do that where you know somebody, but I know that that's going to yeah. happen, especially with you. You know everybody. Yeah. Because you're the popular MedStar dispatcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody who's anyone knows Elaine. Come on. You mean Elaine from MedStar? So there you go. So people are probably listening and they're probably like, wait, I called MedStar. I wonder if I talked to Elaine. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. You can give them your dispatcher voice. MedStar, what do you got? What do you guys say when you answer the phone? MedStar, what's the address of the emergency? Yeah, there you go. Does anybody think she sounds familiar? Let us know. <laughs> you can reach out to Elaine and say thanks for her service. But uh, you know, thank you so much for coming on. This has been a this has been a really good tra- chat. And again, thank you for your service and all that you do. And your posse over at MedStar, just amazing, and the ambulance drivers and such. So just that medical side of stuff is just kind of a a different different uh, different. Uh, animal if you will when it comes to first responder or for emergency services yeah. and stuff and we do have dispatch centers that will do it too like they do the police fire and right. ems and everything but it's you know i think there's something to be said that that's the only you guys don't get a mix of calls those are all the calls you get it's always going to be something medical it's always going to be yeah and, and then people don't realize how much it they tie into each other though so just because we get a medical call doesn't mean it's strictly medical. Yeah, it could change into something else. It could change into an unsafe situation based well, on well, what the medical like situation is. Well, a lot of the is. calls that we do get, they are, of course, they talk to PD or fire first, and then they get sent over to us, and it's 
an assault mm-hmm. pd is still on the line yeah but we're helping with bleeding or yeah whatever oh absolutely I've, yeah. I've, i've worked for north yeah. Ocean hills and had dispatch for haltem and so you know those times that we stay on the phone just to make sure that mm-hmm. you know especially if it's in a, a, a very intense unsafe poss- potentially unsafe situation you know where maybe someone's under the influence of something but was injured and they have weapons and mm-hmm. then it's just i mean it can and we could go on and on about how it could just go to, <laughs> it could just hit the fan really bad real yeah. quick in just a matter of minutes. But it's, I love how the system is, the technology and everything of being able to have that, especially here in Tarrant County where yeah. everybody's connected and they can get, you know, all first responder communications people can get mm-hmm. the information that they need. And that's very, very helpful. So, did you know, uh, do you know the history behind how 911 was first started? Well, I know the whole Haleysville, Alabama thing. The first 911 call? The first, yeah, the test call. Yeah, the test call. Yeah, basically it was a test call, but technically it was the first call. But, like, before that? Oh, it, I don't know about before that. Okay. So, fun fact, I learned this from uh, another person I listened to, Bailey Sarian. She does a dark history podcast oh i totally listen to her is that the one that does the, okay yeah the murder mystery she, makeup she does the makeup stuff mm-hmm. okay i love her i love her too oh my gosh she is fantastic i learned so much from I her know. she did a 911. yeah her mom was a dispatcher really yeah oh yeah i'm gonna try to reach out to her mm. oh that would be great uh, if you do i want to come okay yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely oh my gosh okay so how so tell us what's what's the fun fact that you found out okay so it started out um with um the titanic really? 1912 the someone on the titanic was trying to reach out for help right. when they were sinking and they were just, it, the lines just kept ringing and ringing or whatever and they couldn't get a hold of anybody was it like but didn't they do like the what's the little the morse code thing yeah i mean i i I'm just telling you what what Bailey told oh, okay. told me. No, okay, no, I got you. Yeah, I got so, you. So um, they said that yeah that they were trying to reach out for help. I would imagine they did some sort of Morse code as well. Um, but that's when um, in England they realized we need to have something a specific line that people could call for help. Mm-hmm. So then they implemented their 911, which was is- Was that the call box? Was it in a call box or something? Or did they come up with one number? I know for a while, they, there was they, call boxes too. Almost like the blue light things yeah. around in the parking lot. Um, so uh, they came up with the 999, because that's what they use over there. Oh, is that what it is? Is nine 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 over there in your, in England, and is it all of Europe or just I believe English? So. Okay, yeah. Um, and then the the I, the reason is because I mean back then they had like rotary phones and stuff. Yeah. So the nine was the easiest number to oh, find right. on it. So like if there was like a fire or something, you just look for nine because I think the first number is like zero. I haven't seen a rotary phone in a while. It's been a hot minute. Let's Google it. <laughs> Let's Google it. We're gonna ask the Google to show us a picture of a rotary phone. Rotary phone. I don't even. I mean, I remember my grandparents had one in their living room. Oh, the Fisher Price rotary phone. That's <laughs> cute. Okay, let's see a picture of it. Because that's. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, well, it has. So, okay. It's. Mm, the one, so you know you had that little metal thing. For those that know it, you know, ask oh, yeah, the Google yeah. if you don't know. If you're under a certain age, ask Google what a rotary phone looks like, and you'll be able to see. And so there's that metal clip thing, which I would assume is the stopper to uh-huh. it. The one starts above that, and then below that, going to the left, and or it'd be going clockwise, if you will, is the asterisk, that now known as the hashtag, but it used to call the pound sign. <laughs> And then, then it's zero. Uh huh. Okay. So, and then it's nine. So it goes hashtag, or I'm sorry, asterisk, pound sign, or hashtag, depending on your generation. Uh, zero, nine, eight, and then down, and then starts back over to I one. If that's like the original. I don't. Well, let's see. We'll see the original. Okay. Nine, let's put nineteen twelve. 
1912. Oh, okay. This seems a little bit more in that era. Oh, this definitely seems. This is the one with like the little bells looking things on it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this phone, this is interesting. This is a good chat. So on this phone where that little metal piece, because I think no matter what year or decade or whatever these phones came out, they always had that middle metal pointer stopper thing. This one actually has buttons so I don't think you spin this, but it's reversed and zero is the first underneath it and then nine, but then the pound sign and the uh, asterisk is in, you know, underneath the one. That's interesting. So that's crazy. I didn't know they had buttons and then rotary and then. Yeah, I guess some of them more buttons. This is, this is rotary, but doesn't it look like, you know what? I wonder if this is rotary, but it doesn't have the plate on it to make it move mm. because I just looked at this one. We're looking seriously, folks. I Googled 1912 rotary phones. Um, there's one that has this plate on it. See it. And then it's, and then it doesn't. So it has the same that this phone does. This doesn't have the plate on it. So I think this is also a, it's not buttons. It actually moves too. Cause why would it have that stopper on right. there? So yeah. So yeah, ask to Google that and check that out, but that's okay. So they did the nine, which still is kind of questionable because, well, I wonder it, if they had, it, had it implemented zero for operator. These are good questions. Yeah. If you're listening and you have answers for us, you know, you can always reach out. You can comment depending on what platform that you're listening this to, or you can email me at pubed at tc91.org because I love to hear from everybody but this is a good one rotary phones and the whole when did they start the operator thing yeah now they used to be able to pick up you used to pick up the phone and it would go immediately to them yeah but it was like the red phone yeah like a bat phone yeah (laughs) it's like you would just pick it up and say oh I need to be connected to the fire department or I need to be connected to the police department or sheriff's department or something like constables or whatever they used to call it back in the day and then they would connect you Mm -hmm. and then and then zero came out and you would dial zero and for the operator. The plugging. Yeah. So I wonder, so 911, so then they just, in obviously what Bailey said, and they started nine and they just started using the 999. Yeah. And then whenever they finally came over to the States is they're like, oh, we can't we do what they're doing. We need to do 911, but we don't want to be waiting for that nine to come back all the way around three times. We're going to do one nine and two There ones. we go. And there Short you go. Work smart, not hard. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. That's interesting. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you said that because I'm I'm serious. Like I'm gonna reach out to her, and I'm gonna see because her I'm almost a dispatcher. How have I not picked that? Does she have another different channel that she does her? Because I always listen to the murder so makeup I just, stuff. I just go on YouTube because I like watching YouTube. Do you, do you watch her on YouTube or do yeah. you? Oh no, I watch her on YouTube. Yeah, because oh, she's oh my gosh, she's so funny. Yeah, she is hilarious. She's like da 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 da. I was like, if I ever met her, I feel like we would be best friends. And actually, her family lives over here somewhere. I think they live in Arlington because I was following her on Instagram or something. And they were at like the lights or oh, the GM, the GM parade, something. They were at something. Okay. And I was like, they're in Arlington. Oh, okay, so something in Arlington. Oh, they had a maybe they're having a Christmas tree thing up back in Christmas or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. And for those that are listening, this is, uh, what's her last name? Bailey. Bailey Sarian. Ba- Bailey Sarian. And she, I mean, this, I think she's probably got a pretty big following. I'd be surprised yeah. if there was people listening that already knew. Yeah. Because right when you said her, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. I love listening to her makeup, murder makeup stories and stuff. And she's funny and she just, I mean, I don't really wear makeup, but yeah. I love just watch. It's interesting how she does it. Cause sometimes for Halloween, she'll do like different stuff yeah. and whatever. But uh-huh. so it's on this, is it on the same channel when she started talking about the Titanic and her mom being a nine one dispatcher? So I just Google her or no, I just search her in, in, um, YouTube. And then I like, I don't know how YouTube organizes everything, but it's usually like a jumbled mess yeah so there's like, like an array of and different then, things yeah then i go to like different playlists and then it does murder mystery makeup yeah and then it does dark history and stuff like that yeah i love it if you're if you're into that thing like totally watch her and listen to it because it's it's good i learned so much and i'm like no way and then another fun fact there's another um podcast i listen to it's called ologies by Allie Ward. Okay. And they were talking about ADHD and they said that 
the majority of people who have ADHD, the number one um, field that they're in is EMS. Really? That is interesting. Okay. Hmm. Wow. That is interesting information. And and she like she gets um she does her research and she gets like professionals in all the fields and stuff. Okay. And, and she talks about it, but she talks about all kinds of stuff too. Like I learned about mushrooms, mycology, and like I was like mushrooms. What the heck is like she going to talk? Mushrooms about? on the ground or like yeah. psychedelic mushrooms or all of them, all of the above. And I'm like, okay. What the heck is she going to tell me about mushrooms? Like, what's so interesting about mushrooms? One, I love a good delicious portobello mushroom. I'm just going to say seasoned properly. <laughs> and I so yeah. After yeah, me too. I love mushrooms. And so after I listened to her thing, I was like, what the heck? This just blew my mind. I didn't know she could tell me so much about something that was so like insignificant to yeah, me you would before. Never, you would never think, now you probably look at mushrooms a whole different way now. Oh, yeah, they make fun of me at work, too. Because of the mushrooms? Mushrooms. Do you, have mush- you put mushrooms on your pizza? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mushrooms are good. I really I, I really enjoy them. I wonder what they're, I'll have to look up what their their nutritional value is, but I will, st- I will stop my Googling for this episode because <laughs> I could just Google stuff all day. Uh, you know, I'm one of those people, too, like, for some reason, I'll be, well, can't, sleep and I'll be like mm-hmm. I wonder whatever happened with the John Bonet Ramsey case and then I'll just start going searching <laughs> Bailey st- I'm just I know right I just start looking for stuff it's um, it's horrible and then I wonder why I'm so tired the next day is like oh because I needed to know how squirrels survived during the winter and right. I had to look at that and then that turned into oh a water skiing squirrel and then that goes into other things and then I want to know hey how are boats made you know I mean it's yeah it's a whole cavalcade of, mm-hmm. of nonsense for me with that so thank you YouTube on uh, on helping me not sleep. I appreciate that. So, but anyway, again, thank you, Elaine. I really appreciate. It. It was a good chat. It was a good <laughs> chat. I told you we'll start about something and it'll go off. It'll yeah. go off the other the other end. But hey, you know what? It's not boring. Yeah. So that's good. And I learned something too. And you told me she her mom was a dispatcher. Yeah. So I'm like, and they live in Tarrant County, or at least her folks do. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm going to see what I can do about that because that would be fun. That would be a good time. And I'll, I'll let you know. You'll have to let me know when you do abdominal thrusts. <laughs> and then I'll let you know if I get a hold of her parents. <laughs> so have you only called 911 the one time for yourself? Um, I've called 911 about other things while I was working at this job, but not, I, I think I actually called one time and it was actually for here because there was a, a gentleman out in our parking lot yeah who had who had walked up and needed some i think he was having a diabetic situation and mm-hmm. had needed some help and then um yeah my call was two christmases ago on, like on christmas day so yeah i think so i'm pretty sure why did i i mean you know everyone so do you know <laughs> You only been there three years. <laughs> no, um, it, it's funny too because like I've called once and I was just on the other end of it, and you would think, oh, well, I I know everything that they're gonna ask and stuff, but like I just went blank. Oh, and yeah. I just turned into like a regular oh, yeah. person. Yeah, but you know the one thing that no, I went blank on everything else. The one thing that was literally engraved in my head and in on my tongue to say was my location because I was like if they know it's me and I educated the entire county about knowing your location when you call and I fluff that up <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble. So I was like, that is one thing I am not messing up. And I even had one where I, it wasn't an emergency situation. It was more of a motorist assist for me. And I was on the highway. I blew out the tire. I ran over something in the highway, some big, huge piece of metal or mm-hmm. a sculpture or something. I don't know what it was, but it blew out two of my tires. And I was really good. I actually got a compliment from the Fort Worth officer because he was like, your directions are great. I knew exactly when I saw the call notes, I knew exactly where you're at because it was like the eastbound 30 to the 820 north yeah. split. And, oh, the- and it was like the ramp to get. I mean, I was like all over it because I'm like, not today. I'm totally if I'm especially, calling, especially a freeway. Oh, call, yeah. And 820. 
the, that's well, the that hardest whole, to get an yeah. address. Oh, so I had it like it was money. I felt really good about myself. Like I was like, all right, yeah, you know? like, yeah. But you, like, I better because that's <laughs> that's what I te- that's what I teach people. So it's like the one who teaches calls and well, I don't know my location. Yeah. I mean that wouldn't look too good. So I kind of feel a little bit like pressures on a little bit not that anybody puts it on me it's myself doing it but I'm just kind of like all right come on Abby you got this (laughs) yeah like the one time I called I was like um I was like I don't know I'm on boat club road I don't there's some grass (laughs) and then my boyfriend was there and he he was a, a police officer for Sansom Park. Oh, um, okay. He's not anymore, but he um, he was before. And he's like, oh, it's uh, this hundred block of Boat Club Road, and we got the address. But uh, that that was a, a weird situation. Isn't that crazy? It, but I do know what you mean, though, too, because I've I've you know there's been other people in first responder land that have called, and it, it is true. You just like you just blank. Yeah, and you're just and like, so like, oh. My my situation was I found found a body okay you can't come <laughs> back from that that's wow you win um and so we were coming home because we went to my friend's house. it was for my birthday celebration last year i think and we went to go eat fondue and then we went to my friend's house and hung out and then it was actually um a couple of the dispatchers that um work at medstar and i was like okay it's time to go it's like 2.15 in the morning, like, we need to go out and be careful because it's bar 30 and everybody's leaving. Oh, yeah. And then, so, I'm driving home, and my boyfriend and my daughter are in the car, and they're, like, sleeping, and then I was like, is that a body? Whoa, like, when you were driving? Like, yeah. sometimes, you know how you see, like, a dead coyote or something that's got hit on the road? Yeah. So, you're just a person. Yeah, and I was like, is that a body? Oh, my god. And then they both, like, get up, and then I turn around, and my daughter's like, do you need me to call 911? I was like, let's just wait a second because half the time it's like what somebody. If it's a, what if it's a mannequin or something no, well, like that? It, it's it's usually like somebody that's just sleeping or. What, what, what road? Are you on a busy road? I was on Boat Club Road. Oh, Boat Club Road. Yeah. Someone just sleeps on the. If you get a lot of calls like that, if people just sleep oh, on the well, side of the where road. Where people are sleeping on the side of the road all the time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. All the time. Really? Wow. They're okay. Like, oh, I think there's something wrong with this person, but I don't feel comfortable getting close to them. Well, what are they wearing? Oh, they're on the side of the road, but they're covered up in the blanket. They're probably sleeping. Okay. Like, I know that we have, yeah. like, our homeless places around, like, yeah. like under the, uh, you know, under bridges and stuff. I guess I'm just picturing me driving and then, like, randomly just seeing someone just napping on the side of the road. Okay. So, it was, it was weird because, sh- so, I turn around the little whatever median and then we pull into this driveway and I'm like I tell my daughter call 911 because once we pulled in I saw the scene and I'm like was the person hit by a car auto pit yeah oh wow oh my gosh I like I'm just imagining that you had I'm just going through the emotions right now of you actually seeing that but remember you want to be an EMT yeah <laughs> You're like, Abby, wait, hold a second. So then I, I told my daughter, go ahead and call 911. And she's like, what do I say? I was like, just answer their questions. If you don't know, then give the phone to Brian, my boyfriend. And then um, they eventually gave the phone back to me. Um, and they're like, tell me what happened. Of course, I'm talking to MedStar because it's in their area. And I'm like, hey, it's Elaine. I'm on the other night shift. I, I found a body. It's an auto ped. And then um, they were like, okay, well, and, and I said, like, she's gone. And they're like, well, one of the questions is, please tell me why it looks like she's dead. Yeah, like, do you, what is it, uh, beyond help or something like that, isn't and it? Yeah. So Ugh. I just, like, blanked on the criteria and stuff. But I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to do CPR. And I was like, okay, bet. We'll do the CPR. Wait a minute. Okay, so... I obviously don't have the image that you have in your head, but she was not. Okay. She, Give me another image. Cause I'm picturing like, was it, it, it safe was, to do CPR on her? Okay. So this the person? weird thing was, okay, I turned around, I pulled into the driveway of whoever's house and there was like car parts and, and stuff all in the street. And then I was like, 
I, I talked to Lake Worth police uh, and I was like, this is an auto pad. And like, well, how do you know? And I was like, there's pieces of car in the street. It was um, a homeless lady and you could see her, her little cart and her, there was a shoe in the street and a hat and stuff. But the weird thing was she was not in the street. And she wasn't like hit and then like oh, thrown. Oh, you think they moved her? They did. Oh, they, what? They, they, because the way they moved her, she was out. She, they had her where her feet, she was laying on her back and her feet were hanging like barely off of the, the curb. Like uh, they moved her out of the way on, onto her back and then left. Okay. I, who does that? What is, what is wrong with you? But, they ended up finding the person who did it. Okay, good. Because they did some, like, detective I'm, work and a yeah, piece of the Yeah, because police light. departments are amazing, and they'll find it, and they'll find that person. Good. Yeah. The, they Gee. found a piece of the light from the car and traced the serial number back to the manufacturer. That's amazing. And all that. That's good police work right there. That was, like, within a couple of days. Like, I think before the weekend was over. That's, was that Lake Worth Police? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That is really, really awesome. And it's just, it's reassuring, too, because it's like, if that happened to you, a family member of yours, a good a friend, anyone you knew, like you want that person found, mm-hmm. you want justice for that, you know? Yeah. So, and it doesn't matter who it is or what their status is in the community or something. No one deserves that. That's not, that is, so, that's so sad. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you had to, I mean, still you have, yeah, you had to come across it. So because of someone's poor decision mm-hmm. and someone, you had to endure that whole scene and now you have that memory and, and everything like that. So it's just, oh, wow. Yeah. So another thing that they say at work is be prepared if you go out with Elaine, cause you never know what you're going to find. Apparently. <laughs> I was going to ask if you want to go get some tacos, but never mind. Good Lord. <laughs> Disregard. We'll just we'll just Uber eat it, okay? How about that? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay. That I think I think we're going to end on that one. That was good. I'm I'm probably going to ask you some questions when we get when we get done and everything cuz I I kind of want to know some more stuff, but I don't want to ask it on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> so, thanks again Elaine and and thank you to everyone who listened. I appreciate your support. Uh if you haven't already, uh go back and listen to the other episodes and and our fabulous some of our fabulous 911 uh first responders that are in the Tarrant 911 district area. And also go back and listen to season 2 and 1. They're still hanging out out there and you and be entertained and razzle dazzled by them. If you have any questions, comments, or anything, or want something specific that you'd like me to talk to talk about on this podcast, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can uh, reach me on any of our social media platforms via, the, via messaging system, or you can shoot me an email at publiced at tc911.org. Until next time, have a fabulous week. <laughs>